So overall, episode one of season two is decently good, but the main issue with the episode was blood and cheese. In this video, I'm going to go over the main issues with this scene, what happened in the books, and how the scene could have been made better. So the book context for Blood and Cheese starts the same. Damon orchestrates Blood and Cheese to go out for revenge. Specifically, Damon says an eye for an eye, a son for a son. The key difference here being that he's not going for Eamon specifically. More so, he's looking for straight up blind revenge by killing one of the kids. You could probably make the argument that in the show, Damon is being whitewashed since at least he tells Blood and Cheese to target Eamon first. And it's implied that Damon does say a son for a son in the show, but we're never shown him saying it for some reason. So take that how you will. In the books, Allison was also present. Helena would come with her kids to talk to Allison every night. So Blood and Cheese waited in her room and tied her up. Another big difference is that instead of just the twins, Jaharis and Jahera, Maylor is also present. Maylor is the youngest of all the three kids and hasn't shown up yet in House of the Dragon. The reason why he is important also ties into the major issues with the scene as a whole. So in the book, a big part of Blood and Cheese is the fact that Helena has to choose. Her choosing which kid dies has major consequences for her, and it's the main source of what makes the scene so shocking. Blood and Cheese need to capture the head of one of the sons on Team Green just like in the show. But in the book, since Maylor is there, the main choice Helena has to make is between Maylor and Jaharis. Blood and Cheese see the two boys, and they're essentially like, well, pick one. In the show though, there is no Maylor, so they make Helena choose by naming which twin is a boy since they look the same. Helena can just lie about which one is a boy here, and that's the main source of where the choice is coming from. The issue is that Blood and Cheese can easily just check which one is a boy themselves. In fact, they literally say this, but instead of just checking, they keep asking Helena which one is a boy over and over again. This makes the scene feel weird and contrived. Like, why are they putting so much weight on who she says is a boy? Wouldn't it just be much quicker if they looked for themselves? With the male or present, that issue doesn't exist because you don't have to do the whole twin thing. For me, this was the biggest issue with the scene. If you pick up on it, it really does just take you out of the whole scene just in general with how logically inconsistent it is, especially since even someone as dumb as Blood and Cheese would just check for themselves. There's no way they would just keep asking her like this and it's made even worse when Blood doubts what she says. Doubting her is taking even more precious time away. Like, dude, just check. <laughs> Another problem many people had with this scene is the lack of emotion from Helena. This scene is supposed to signify that there is no going back. War is inevitable, and there's not going to be any more tiptoeing around the idea of dragons being used. Helena not having an emotional reaction here, though, makes the no turning back point seem flat. Many people have argued that, at least. I think seeing Helena break down here would be nice. This scene doesn't have to be gory or anything like that, but it makes it so that I really do feel bad for Helena, much in the same way it's super emotional for Rhaenyra after she finds some of Luke's remains. I know there's explanations for this, like Helena's in shock, or that she's coded to be neurodivergent, and while those ideas do explain the reaction she had, I don't think that it makes her reaction any better in the sense that it makes the show more entertaining. Most of the fallout from Jaehaerys dying will be seen in the next episode though for sure. After the credits, Aegon literally says that he declares war and I imagine a lot of the episode is going to focus on the grief created by the assassination. This especially might be the case since episode 1 has been building up Aegon and the Greens a lot. I don't think they're just going to waltz past this event as simply something that truly started the dragon dance. And on another note, Blood and Cheese should not be able to just walk into the castle like that. Sure, they should be able to get in obviously but there's no way Helena and her kids are just unguarded. Maybe I can understand Aemon since he's a trained swordsman and all that but Helena is like the least prepared person for war and conflict. And it's the heir to the throne. Like why are they not guarded? You can maybe say Cole but why would Cole be the only person to guard Helena? I've heard some theories that Cole dismissed all the guards so that he can get frisky with Alicent but if that's true then that's a total character assassination. There's no way Cole would be dumb enough to just get rid of the whole castle's security for a night just so he can get late. In the books, Blood and Cheese have to kill some guards and handmaidens, and they also know Helena and Allison's schedule and routines. They didn't just walk in there and just randomly find her. 
Cheese wasn't even prepared to go where the royals stay. Like, dude, you knew you were going to have to kill someone in the royal family. Did you just not expect to go up there? Like, you just wanted blood to go by himself? And before I end the video, I'm going to talk about repercussions of blood and cheese. That should be interesting to see in the show. So spoilers for stuff that's probably going to happen later in the season and spoilers for book canon as well. So after blood and cheese, Helena gets super depressed. This is part of the reason why the choice is important. She can't look at Maelor because she chose for him to die. In the book, Selena chooses Maelor to be killed, but Blood kills Jaehaerys instead to make Helena have a living representation of her choice and to make more emotional damage. So she feels guilty every time she looks at Maelor and it gets to the point where she can't even really function. This is major because Aegon loses an heir and his relationship with Helena is pretty much over with after this. They stop sleeping in the same bed and Aegon copes with this loss by getting into drunk rages. And remember as well that Helena is a dragon rider. She rides Dreamfire, which is a fairly large dragon, actually. Aegon maybe wasn't betting on using Dreamfire in the war before Blood and Cheese, but he definitely isn't now. Helena can't even do any basic functioning. She stops eating and she completely becomes depressed. Eventually, this leads to Helena jumping into a pit of spikes, which is why the scene is so important with her choosing. Really, it's the only scene of significance that Helena has, and it signifies a turning point within the story. And emotionally, if the characters don't seem super into it, then again, it makes the scene feel kind of flat. The scene is also supposed to fuel the bad blood between the Blacks and the Greens. In this episode, the vibe is that Vagar is playing defense and some negotiations and agreements are being sought out. After this assassination though, the Greens are actively looking to use their dragons offensively, which is what starts the dragon dances and is fundamentally what causes the Targaryens to lose their power. So in the grand scheme of things, this scene is very significant. With all that being said, the scene was decent, it just needed to be done a little bit differently in my opinion. But what do you think? Comment down below if you like this episode or this specific scene. Alright, see ya.